I don't know why, but I've always liked these balanced arm lamps. And so I'm making a gigantic balanced arm to put my camera on so I can make these videos without constantly having the tripod in my way. When I originally machined these, I kind of guessed on how much to take out, how much range of motion I would need. You can see this is bottoming out there, so it won't go down any farther. I think really in terms of how much range of motion I want on this thing, I want as much as I can get. So I'm just going to knock that back. Going the other way, it's still hitting in there. It might eventually hit there, so I'll take some of that off too. This doesn't need to be real square in this dimension direction, but we'll get it close. So now if I'm bending the thing downward, I've got a lot more room to go there, but now it's hitting on the other end here. And if I go the other way, it hits there. So we'll open that one up. Do I like this setup? No. See, this is exactly what I mean. So now I can go that far that way, all the way that way. So now I can get this thing to go really far. I guess that's bending down. I like that. Now we're hitting there. This time I'm gonna make a little mark on here so I actually know what I'm aiming for. <laughs> oh yeah. So the end of this is actually binding on here. You can see where it's chewing it up a little. This won't actually turn unless you lift the whole thing up. I think the solution here is going to be to round out the end of this piece. This is one that I could set up on the rotary table, but for the amount of material that's going to be removed, might as well just do it by hand. A little bit of layout should make it turn out nicer. And then the rest of this is just going to be a repeat of what I did before. So there you go. I think this is a pretty good range of motion. It'll give me a lot of options for positioning this thing. The next thing to do here is to add some springs to this so it's, you know, more than a foot off the floor. I'm pretty sure there's got to be a way to work out what the actual spring tension should be on this. But I don't know what that is and I've got a bunch of trampoline springs and some turnbuckles. So I'm just going to do that and make it adjustable. This will also give me the flexibility later if I want to add on some accessories to the camera or swap to a different camera. You know, I can just reset the turnbuckles. I've got this spacer that seems like it'll be a good anchor for the spring. I just need to put a little groove in it. It's a tool I use a lot more than I thought I would. It's just a cut-off blade that's been broken off too many times. And I just ground a little radius on the end of it. The other end here, I think if I just put a hole in here, I can just hook this in. Go a little bit out because the spring isn't totally seated yet either. So somewhere like there, maybe. Oh, 
Well, that's horribly off-centered, but that's what, yeah, yeah. I've got this adjusted so with the camera on here it balances out pretty well. And just a side note, you guys will get a kick out of this for when I'm filming with my phone, I just put it in a micrometer stand. So for the upper arm, it's basically carrying twice the weight. It's carrying the weight of the other arm, the camera, and itself. So I think I'm going to do two springs and I mount them on the outside like that. The other thing that I've noticed is there's a bunch of torsional flex in this. And I'm hoping by doing that it might take some of that out. It's not going to hurt. So I need to make something to mount this on, stand it off the side a little bit. And I found a rusty piece of scrap. It's got some sort of spline on it there. It's soft enough I should be able to machine it. I'm going to clean this up with the wire wheel and I'll meet you guys over at the lathe. I hope you weren't waiting here too long. That's interesting. It looks like this might have just been piece pressed on there. Using a piece of scrap like this is always kind of a gamble, but I'm thinking since this had splines on it, it's probably pretty decent quality. So you might notice that this one is a little shorter than that one, and that's why I can put this little washer that I made in here. Totally intentional, has nothing to do with doing something like forgetting to account for the thickness of the parting blade when I was adding up the length of this. Totally intentional. I got a lot better knurl on this one with the second knurling tool I tried. Went back and tried to do it on that one. Still has like a double repeating thing in one direction and single in the other, but it doesn't really matter because I'm probably just going to go total barbarian on that. So I'm not sure if having these come in from either side they're going to interfere with each other in the middle, but we'll find out. When I'm doing a project like this, inevitably I can't foresee all of the issues. And I probably could do a better job designing it ahead of time and see some of them, but there's still going to be things that pop up you have to deal with. In this case, not only do the two hooks interfere with each other inside there, so I can't put both of these in at once, but this turnbuckle is also hitting there, so I can't actually really adjust it the way I want to. So, time to make some more hardware. So what I came up with is basically the same thing I did up here. Same operations, just different dimensions. These pieces came out pretty nice. The turnbuckle's a tight enough fit that it's more or less captive in there.
Now that I've seen these things with tension on them, I want to make these a bigger diameter to make sure this spring doesn't slip off. So I feel better about that. I think that's going to do a better job staying in place. And it's more out of the way. Two more little things I need to take care of. This dovetail on here is 45 degrees. The one that's, you know, underneath you guys here on the tripod is 60 degrees. I'd like to be able to use the same shoe on both so that when I'm working somewhere else in the shop, I don't have to swap the shoe around. It kind of works the way it is, but I can recut this to 60 degrees. The other one is this notch in here. Let's me drop the camera down. But because of these knobs, most of the time it's facing toward the back. So I want to put one somewhere else on here. Oh, and this big chunk of cast iron is just here because if I don't have it and the camera's not on here and I let go of this, So this one I kind of beat on and pulled on and pressed and everything and in the end it just slides out. So it's got a... okay. This is a 60 degree carbide cutting tool. Some people say you can't use carbide in a shaper, but I guess it just depends on what you're doing with it. So I measured this very carefully, did the math to account for the thickness of pins, and then dialed in the wrong number. So I just heated it up, jammed it in there. It's not super critical, but it should keep the camera from falling out. So after spending a while staring at this, I think the best thing to do instead of cutting another slot like this, is to actually just move these two holes. I want them on this side of the slot. So that's going to be the easiest way to do it. I'd usually clamp a part like this this way so it's holding on the flat surfaces, but this way I don't have to recenter. And just using a parallel to set it up gets you close enough for what I'm doing to keeping the same zero. I can't believe I got that the first shot. Give me a minute, I'm gonna go buy a lottery ticket. Put a little Loctite on these so that they don't loosen up on their own. And... Of course, now I've got these two extra holes. I don't really want stuff getting in there, but I've got a solution I think you're going to like. Come on, I've been working on this thing for weeks. I want it to be done. What, you thought I was going to make little plugs for these? 
That was a little extra work, but now I can get this really great overhead shot of my workbench. And I really need to clean this. I think that looks better. Let's see what kind of shots we can get of the shaper. And let's check out the mill. And of course, the lathe. I'm really glad to have that project done and have that tripod out of my way. This is going to be a huge improvement for me for doing these videos. There's still some things that need some tweaking and some accessorizing. I'd like to run power to the camera and the light, but I don't actually have a 110 outlet on this wall, so I'll need to add that before I can do that. That's probably down the road a ways. The biggest drawback I've found so far with this thing is if it does get bumped, it does tend to bounce quite a bit. It's not too hard to get it to stop bouncing. But even just starting the recording will make it bounce a little bit. But Canon makes this nifty little remote that I can use to start and stop the video, so I can do that without touching the camera.